Hi there. In this video, I'm going to have an exam review session with a past paper. The paper is IB Economics People Want SL from May 22 exam. Let's give it a go. All right, question 1A. Governments intervene in markets to support firms and to promote equity. Explain one policy that could be used to support firms and one policy that could be used to promote equity. We're defining government intervention and equity. And in body one, I can explain a policy to support firms. One of the common ways to support firms is through provision of subsidy. And I should explain the reason why government support firms. Since they are producing necessity goods or merit goods, or they are producing PES in elastic goods or services. Uh, perhaps their, their production is creating positive externality, or maybe the industry itself is relatively infant. That's why government would provide subsidy to certain firms. I can use uh, an example like electric car industry. And then I can draw a diagram showing the subsidy effect on the market. And next, I can explain one policy to promote equity. The introduction of progressive taxation or broadening the taxation uh, system can be the one option, such as uh, income taxation. And then I can explain how the tax system uh, can improve equity in the country since it increases taxation from rich and decreasing uh, the taxation from the poor. And the collected tax revenues can further be used for increasing transfer payments. And then uh, I can deepen the analysis by comparing the progressive taxation system with regressive taxation system, such as the consumption taxation. And the relevant example can be the one that's saying, most of the countries that have decent equity have well-established progressive taxation system, like the country of Denmark or Sweden, things like that. Question B, using real world examples, evaluate the fact for stakeholders of a government imposing an indirect tax on a particular good. My intro will define indirect taxation and its relevant stakeholders. First, in body one, I can talk about those who are negatively affected. Consumers are going to be definitely worse off, especially uh, the taxation, indirect taxation is regressive, and it can be more harmful when the goods uh, PD is inelastic. Also, producers are going to be worse off as well, especially their production is inelastic. Uh, workers are going to be also negatively affected. I can support the idea by drawing a diagram showing the tax impacts, decreasing quantity available, and increasing prices. The real world example I can use would be uh, the one that UK's alcohol tax will change. Uh, duties will increase by more than 10% overall for such items. Therefore, it's going to affect alcohol drinkers and producers and related workers. Next, I can talk about those who are politically affected. First, government can definitely collect more tax revenue, so they're going to be better off. Also, alternative goods producers are going to be better off since they can have more sales. And this time, the real world example will be the UK's new car tax rate changes that will hit petrol, diesel, and hybrid drivers. So it says from April 1st to 2024, uh, the uh, fuel cost will increase in line with the retail price index, blah, blah, blah. So, so I reckon it's going to affect the government and alternative goods producers and social welfare since the demerit goods consumption will decrease. Question number two, A. Explain how the use of supply side policies might encourage greater domestic competition and improve the international competitiveness of a country. In intro, I can define supply side policies and international competitiveness. 
And in body one, I can explain how supply side policies encourage greater domestic competition. First, there will be an explanation about how interventionist to supply side policies, such as uh, government spending on education, training, R&D, infrastructure, all of that, uh, all of that encourage greater competition in domestic markets. And I can further explain how market-based supply side policies, such as uh, privatization and deregulation, encourage greater competition in domestic markets. And also, more firms would compete and innovate according to all the policies that I mentioned above that would encourage productivity and efficiency in the production of goods and services in the country's domestic market. So I can uh, illustrate all of the analysis above with a PPC diagram shifting outward. Next is about how supply side policies improve international competitiveness. I can explain how the greater domestic competition that I mentioned above can foster international competitiveness, since there will be cheaper and better qualities of goods and services produced. And I can explain how the use of market-based supply-side policies, such as trade liberalization and anti-monopoly legislation, all those things can further improve international competitiveness. There will be an ADAS diagram showing SRAS and LRAS shifting to the right. Question B. Using real world examples, evaluate the view that the use of interventionist to supply side policies is the most effective way of reducing a country's rate of unemployment. My intro will define interventionist to supply side policies and reducing unemployment as a macroeconomic objective. And first I can argue that there are some agreeable points to the view. To support the argument, I can explain how interventionist to supply side policies increase the productive capacity of the economy increasing the demand for labor in the long run and thus lowering the level of certain types of unemployment, especially structural unemployment. To be more specific, government spending on education and training, R&D and infrastructure, all can contribute to decrease structural unemployment. And noticeable pros of the policies will be that uh, it is stable and fundamental. And I can draw an ADAS diagram to show LRAS curve being shifted to the right, uh, or maybe PPC curve shifting to the right. And real world example that I can use would be um, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate over 2000 railway infrastructure projects. This includes the redevelopment of 553 stations under the scheme, modernizing passenger amenities and enhancing connectivity. So that's the example. And next, I can argue that there are some disagreeable points to the view as well. First, I can present the cons of interventionist supply side policies, such as time lags, administrative inefficiencies, and political motivation. And then I can explain other types of unemployment and other alternative policies that can work better, especially for the frictional unemployment. Maybe market-based supply side policies can work better since it's about mismatch between the labor demand and labor supply. Also about the cyclical unemployment, demand side policies can work better, such as uh, demand side policies are more direct and prompt. So that's what I can say. Last, I can talk about a real world example, such as Australia's fiscal policies of providing childcare benefits and winding back business taxes have helped the country keep unemployment rate below 4%, in the post-pandemic period. Question 3a, explain how political and social factors can act as barriers to economic growth and economic development. Intro will define political and social barriers, economic growth and economic development. In body one, I should analyze how political and social factors can act as barriers to economic growth. Uh, I should focus on quantitative and aggregate demand side matters uh, so that I can explain how political factors like 
uh, political instabilities or lack of coherent institutional framework or corruption, those kind of things can hinder uh, coherent academic activities. And I can further explain how social factors become barriers. The social factors like high crime rate or lack of social norms, all those type, kind of things can uh, be the deterrence to economic activities as well. And uh, therefore, uh, firms find business operated unstable and unpredictable. Consumer confidence would be low as well. And the government would find difficult to collect stable tax revenues. And in body two, it's about how political and social factors can act as barriers to economic development. And the lack of proper provision of necessary goods and services like sanitation, education, and healthcare, and all those above uh, make people trapped in poverty cycle, lowering national productivity and leading lower LRAS. Such can be illustrated with a poverty cycle. B, using real world examples, discuss the significance of economic barriers for a country's economic growth and economic development. Intro will define economic barriers, economic growth, and economic development. First, I can analyze how economic barriers affect countries' economic growth and economic development. Uh, I'm going to start explaining how economic barriers hinder economic growth and development, such as lack of access to infrastructure and uh, proper technology provision, low levels of human capital, over-dependence on primary sector, having big informal economy, and government uh, having huge debt. All those things above can limit consumption, investment, government spending, international competitiveness, and national productivity, and lowering GDP, GNP. Uh, you should understand the fact that all the factors that are mentioned above are economic factors. And then I can draw a diagram showing a recessionary gap, ADS diagram. It's the real world example that I'm going to use is India. Next, I can focus on the consideration of other barriers that can be significant to economic growth and development. Um, I can explain how other barriers like political and social barriers can hinder economic growth and development as much as the economic barriers do, such as political instability or lack of coherent institutional framework or corruption or social factors like gender inequalities, income disparities, environmental degradation. And then I can say how those above can limit consumption, investment and government spending international competitiveness, national productivity. So uh, they are also largely related to uh, affect economic growth and economic development. I can draw a diagram showing poverty's uh, trap, or maybe I can use Lorentz curve. And this time I'm gonna use the example of Russia-Ukraine war. Due to the political instability of the country, many foreign firms left and Russians also left their own country as well. So, so the country's economy negatively affected. Thank you. All right, this is the end of people one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.